Hello from OpenVPN. In this tutorial, I will be installing OpenVPN Access Server in Hyper-V. Hyper-V is a Windows Server virtualization application, and we happen to have a virtual hard disk that can be used to install the Access Server in a Windows environment. I will walk you through the process of attaching the virtual hard drive image to a Hyper-V virtual machine. I'm going to start here on our homepage at OpenVPN.net, and we have a link right here for virtual appliance. If I click that, you'll see that there's two available, one for ESXi and then the one for um, Hyper-V that has the uh, VHD. And I'll select that and that's going to take me to a documentation page. I want to bring your attention to one thing right away and that is the default user that comes with the, hard, the VHD. Remember this is a hard drive that's already installed already an operating system and the default user is root and the password is OpenVPN AS. You're going to want to change that immediately for security reasons obviously. Now if I scroll down a little bit further here's the link that goes directly to the download for the appliance and I'll click that and start downloading. It's a large file, 706 megabytes, so I'll be right back. Okay, that is finished downloading. I will move over to my Windows Server environment, whoops, which is in my VMware here. Okay, I'm in Windows Server 2019, and I've downloaded the, um, the virtual hard drive to this machine. It comes in a zip file, and I've gone ahead and extra extracted that. And if I enter that folder, you'll see it's a hard disk image. Now we need to go into the Hyper-V tools. If you don't have a shortcut here, the Hyper-V tools can, you can, can be found under tools under Hyper-V manager here on the server manager dashboard. And then I'll click my setup here and we'll get started. Now if you don't have a virtual switch set up, you're going to need an external virtual switch in order to have access to the internet from your um, from your server or from your uh, virtual machine. I've already set one up. Um, I can go ahead and remove this and set up a new one. It's a very quick process. Click New Virtual Switch, choose External, and Create Virtual Switch. It's, um, I prefer to allow the management operating system to share the network adapter. That gives me a network adapter that's ready for internet use right away. And click Apply. And it's applying the changes, and there we go. We have a new virtual switch. Actually, I'm going to rename that to external and apply those changes. Okay, now we're ready to create a virtual machine. To do that, in this menu, I'll click New and New Virtual Machine. And then we'll just go through the wizard here. Click Next, uh, specify name and location. This is an access server. I'll call it that. Next. Now, Generation 1 is necessary. Our virtual hard disk image requires that a generation type 1 VM be used. So do not change the default of generation 1 here. Assign memory. I think 1 gig will do for this, this demonstration. And then configure networking. Here's where I'm going to attach the interface that, or the virtual switch that I already created. See, I have an internal one and then the external one. Choose external and next. And then on this page, I can create a new virtual hard disk or use an existing one. This is where I attach the virtual appliance um, image itself. So I'll choose use an existing virtual hard disk and then browse to the location where I downloaded the image. And here it is. And then go into the folder and then choose the actual disk itself. And that looks good. And click Next and then Finish. The, now the virtual machine's being created. That was fast. It created the virtual machine. It's ready to go. When um, a VM's created in Hyper-V, it is in off state. I can double click 
to go ahead and start the machine or to get to a console actually and then click start and now it'll boot up for the first time this may take a minute because um, it's a brand new image it is based on Ubuntu 18 And we get the login prompt. I'm going to use the default root and uh, the default password that comes with the machine. And there we go. We get the welcome to OpenVPN Access Server Appliance and the wizard. Click type yes to agree to the uh, end user license agreement. And the defaults will be fine for this. Now on this one, we're going to hit a little, um, a very common situation with this particular virtual appliance. If I go back to the documentation page, it'll talk about having to uh, add a static IP address on the, on the appliance. If you don't have a DHCP server set up on your Windows server, the appliance will not automatically grab an IP address. So we'll just need to set one up and then go through the wizard again. You can, you can see here we have instructions that are available for setting up a static IP address. In Ubuntu 18, it's under NetPlan. Oops. And you see it's trying to pull from a DHCP server, which does not exist. So I'll change that to no. And I'll go ahead and visit the documentation page again to make sure I get the format of this YAML file correct. So I'll open this one in a new tab and take a look. And this shows the format of that NetPlan YAML file. So I need addresses next. And get my address that's available um, in my domain. And the netmask. And let's just do these one by one. Gateway. Name servers. And that is in, oh, the addresses is indented. I'll just use uh, one of the Google DNS servers. And that should do it. NetPlan apply in Ubuntu 18 to apply the changes. I should have an IP address now. Yes, I do. And then we can run the wizard once again. In any access server, there's a script available with the name of OVPN init that will run that um, that wizard default there's my interface now I'll choose two and then the defaults are fine for the rest of this at the end of the configuration I should be given a URL for the client web service and the admin UI and there they are so now if everything's gone according to plan I should be able to visit that admin UI so I'll just move over to a web browser and check that out Let's put in that address
And there we go, there's the login page for the admin UI. Now I haven't set the Bootstrap OpenVPN password yet. A, a Bootstrap user comes with every access server with the username of OpenVPN, but it comes with no password, that has to be set. So let's go ahead and set that. Type the password twice. Go back to the login screen and I'll be able to log in with that. And there we go, our server is on. Access server is up and running and ready to accept connections. It is the latest version of the virtual appliance. And uh, this looks good. It's ready to start adding users, configuring routes, anything you need to do. Now we do have one bit of housekeeping to take care of, and that is that root password, which is only enabled just to give you access initially to the virtual machine. And I'm going to go ahead and change that password now with the uh, sudo, sudo password command. And now I can enter.